Hey there, pre-med. In this video, we're going to discuss everything you need to know before registering for an MCAT test date in 2025. First up, your timeline. Registration for the January through June test dates opens on October 2nd, which is a Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. The registration for July through September test dates will not open until sometime in February, so you don't need to stress if you're planning on taking your MCAT next summer. Before choosing an MCAT test date, it's important to consider your timeline and when you want to apply for medical school. This is individual for everyone, but I'm gonna give you a few key things to think about as you make your decision. First, are you planning to apply in the 2025 to 2026 application cycle? If so, applications open in May and June, depending on if you're applying DO through ACOMAS or MD through AMCAS. Usually for AMCAS, the application submission date opens at the end of May or early June, and ACOMAS opens in early to mid-May. Most schools and advisors recommend that you have at least one MCAT score that you're okay applying with before submitting your applications. And you don't get your MCAT score for a full 30 to 35 days after you take it. So once you take your MCAT exam, you're gonna to need to wait just about a month before receiving your score. So for most students, that means that if it's your first time taking the MCAT next year and you want to apply that cycle, you'll want to take your MCAT by the end of April at the latest so you can get your score back and make your best possible decisions about which schools to apply to before submitting your primary. Now there's a lot of caveats with this. If you're a retaker, you can absolutely take your exam later on in the spring and summer and still apply. Your scores get automatically updated to any open applications. Some programs also recommend applying to one or a couple schools and then taking your MCAT and applying to additional schools later on in the cycle if needed. So it's really personal and it's a good idea to talk to your advisor or whoever's helping you put together your application about the best possible timeline. The general best practice is to have a score by the end of May if you're applying that year, unless you have specific recommendations from your institution or advisor program you're working with. The next thing to think about when considering your timeline is, is this your first attempt? If you're an MCAT retaker, it really opens up the available test dates because you're prepared for a retake and you're going to hopefully do your best effort and move forward with that reattempted score. If it's your first time taking the MCAT, I always like to recommend to students to give yourself enough time for a retake without changing your application cycle. That's because test day can be intimidating, the performance can just not go the way you want, and you wanna have that buffer time to still get the score you need before applying. This is true for retakers to some extent as well, but it's important to consider what do I need to do to get to a score I'm happy with on test day? So making sure you have enough time for a retake if needed, which is why the March and January test dates are great test dates for those who are applying in the next cycle. If you're not applying in 2025, you can really take the MCAT anytime that you are ready and you've put in the hours of work, which gets me to my third consideration for timeline. Do you have enough time to prepare? This is not a test that you want to go into cold. All right, I know that's how, true for other standardized tests. Let's just see how it goes. For the MCAT, you want to prepare to the best of your ability and feel at least 80% ready before you hit test day. For most students, that means about 300 hours of studying at minimum before you attempt your exam. So looking at your schedule, is 300 hours reasonable between now and your chosen test day? 300 hours is an estimate. Some students need more. So if you'd like to calculate a more specific goal amount of hours, you can go ahead and check out our study calculator below, which will take your current score and your goal MCAT score and allow you to make decisions about how many hours you need to study per week and in total before testing. But it's very important to make sure you have that time plus a few weeks of buffer time in case you get sick or things happen before you take your exam. You want to feel at least 80% ready. The final thing to consider for timeline is your schedule and holidays. A lot of students love the idea of the January 10th and 11th test date. It's right after the semester. If you're in school, it's right after the holidays, so you'll have plenty of time to study, right? Unfortunately for most students, this is actually a really difficult time to study, especially if you're spending time with family or traveling. It's a time when many of us get sick as the seasons change. So you really want to make sure that if you are planning for one of the earlier January test dates, you've done the majority of your studying before you hit that mid to late December holiday end of year time. And that way you're not trying to cram before that January test date 
and during a time where you have a lot of change to your routine and or have a lot of other obligations. Similarly, look at your schedule. Do you have a reasonable schedule where you can include up to 20 hours of MCAT prep in your weekly schedule? If you already have a full life, tacking more MCAT prep on top of it without letting go of anything else is just gonna lead to burnout and be a very frustrating experience. So make sure that you choose a test date where you have a schedule that allows you to prepare effectively week over week and build your skills in a consistent way. Once you have all of those timeline considerations ready, you can check out the full MCAT exam schedule below. We have linked to all the available dates that are released by the AAMC. The next thing to consider when preparing to register for the MCAT is the financial burden. Unfortunately, this process is expensive and that starts with registering for the MCAT, which costs $345. There are also fees to reschedule or cancel your exam. So you don't wanna just put a date in wherever and whenever and then have to change it because it's going to cost you hundreds of dollars depending on the time for you to move that test date. For my students, I really recommend, especially if this is going to be a high financial burden, to be really confident in the test date you choose so that you don't have to move and reschedule and add those costs to an already expensive process. The full list of scheduling fees is on that registration page linked below. The AAMC does have a fee assistance program for those who qualify, so it's definitely worth checking out if you think you may be applicable for that program. That drastically decreases the cost of registering for the MCAT, it drops it down to $140, decreases the cost of rescheduling fees, and you get a year of free MCAT resources like the QBanks and the practice exams from the AAMC themselves. So it's definitely worth checking out if you think you qualify. Again, that is linked below. The third thing to consider before registering for your exam is if you want to apply for MCAT accommodations. So accommodations are extra time, stop the clock breaks, a single room instead of being in a group room setting. And this is applicable to anyone who's had accommodations in their undergrad experience or thinks they need them for any reason at all, really. ADHD, testing anxiety, medications, physical considerations. The AMC is pretty flexible in terms of what qualifies for accommodations, but the paperwork process is lengthy. It takes about two months to get an answer back about whether or not you're approved for accommodations after you submit all of your paperwork that they require. So if you think you want to apply for accommodations, now is the time to do so, so that you can get those accommodations before the testing season starts in January. Once you do get your accommodations approved, you actually schedule your exam separately with your accommodations through Pearson View, which is where the exams are held. Again, for additional information on any MCAT accommodations, you can click the link below in the caption. Finally, let's talk about how to use the registration portal and register for your exam. So registration opens on Wednesday, October 2nd at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. And this process is kind of like getting Taylor Swift tickets. It's going to require you to probably sit in a waiting room for a while, and you may not get your ideal test date or location. So how do we prepare effectively? First, you wanna enter into the registration portal days in advance and put all of your basic information in. This process takes about 10 to 15 minutes. You don't wanna be doing that on the day of registration. Second, you wanna have several dates and or locations picked out in advance in order of preference. So if you don't get your top preference date or location, we wanna have backup options available so you can register for those backup options on the portal itself. It's also a good idea to say, you know what, if none of my preferred spots are open, I'm going to put myself on a wait list. They all have wait lists that say notify me and I'm gonna wait for a spot to open up on my ideal location or time rather than doing something that's not ideal for me. So making those decisions ahead of time, again, depending on the location that you're in, the spots could be very limited. So you want to look up Pearson View testing centers in your area. You can do that just on Google Maps and write down maybe one to five different testing locations that you would be okay traveling to on test day. And then again, are your dates flexible or not? Do you really only want to take it on January 10th or is any time in January okay for your schedule? Make sure you have that decision planned out ahead of time. So once you enter into that portal, you can go ahead and register for any of your preferred dates. Once you log in, they're going to put you in a waiting room and let you know how many people are ahead of you before entering into the registration side of the portal. Once you get in and out of the waiting room, you have a limited time to choose your test date and pay for it. So make sure you have your credit card handy and your government issued ID. When you register, you need to make sure that your name matches up with your government ID that you'll use on test day. They won't let you test if your names don't match. 
So make sure your names line up as you register for your exam. The AAMC does have a registration video walkthrough on their page. Again, when you go to the test dates page that's linked below, you can go to the additional information about registration and look at the video walkthrough if you have any questions about how to register through the portal. Once you go through that whole process and register for your exam, it's time to start studying. The very first step to any MCAT prep program is to take a full length practice exam. If you need support on how to do that, I have a free practice exam mini course. Again, that's linked in the caption below. It'll take you through how to take your first exam and how to review it for your strengths and weaknesses to build your study plan. If you'd like more support on your MCAT prep process, I do have live online courses running throughout the fall, winter, and spring. You can check out the link to the available courses below and enroll in the one that best fits your schedule. And as always, if you have any questions at all on anything in this video, please put it in the comments and I'll make sure to answer. Good luck on registration day and happy studying.